this video, I'm gonna teach you how to make one of those fidget clickers. This video is going to be almost 10 minutes long, or if not longer, might even be a part two. I'm sorry, I'm trying to keep it under 10 minutes, but let's get into it. First, Google the image you're looking to make into the fidget. You're gonna need the outline. Screenshot or save the outline you want. Head to that website right there, picksvg.com. Upload your image, download the SVG. Now I need you to go to my link tree, it's in my bio. Click on my little guy right here. Once on my link tree, you're gonna to wanna to go to 3D design right here. And then you're gonna to wanna to click on this one right here and you're gonna click right here where it says copy and tinker. So this is gonna load up Tinkercad and you're actually gonna want those two files right there. I'm gonna show you how to move those over to here. So on this side of the screen, you're gonna come over here under basic shapes and you're gonna to go to your creations. Now you're going to just simply select this one right here and you're gonna click create shape over on this side right here. So create shape right there. And then from here, you're just going to simply name it whatever you wanna name it. You're gonna give it a description if you want. You're gonna hit save image or save shape. You're gonna do that twice. Once for this one, once for this one. Now go back to Tinkercad and open up a brand new project. Now that you have your new project, import, drag and drop your SVG file, click art, Set the scale. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're going to duplicate your item just by clicking the duplicate button right here. Once you hit duplicate, the duplicate has actually already selected, so that's perfect. All you have to do is come over here and we're gonna change a few settings. Quality is gonna go all the way to the top. Fill mode is gonna be outer line. And then your cornering is going to be round and line width is going to be one. And that's it. And this is what you should be left with. Give it just a second and boom, there it is. I changed the item that we just uh, manipulated to pink so you can see what we just created. So we have our project and then we now have an outer line. The next step is to just select the pink and the pink border that we just created and you're gonna actually export that and you're gonna save this as an SVG file because we're gonna need to do that and bring it back into this project so we can manipulate it. Once you've saved that, go ahead and, and make sure you're only selected on that pink area and you're gonna hit the delete button. Now you're gonna hit import and you're gonna take that file you just saved at SVG and you're gonna drag it back into the project, click artwork, leave the rest of this the same and click import again and it should come right back in to the exact same spot. The next step is we're gonna click the inner part of your project and we're actually going to go to fill mode and we're gonna turn that to a silhouette and that's going to fill in all of this in the middle here. Now we're gonna go ahead and duplicate this again and we're just gonna kind of bring this off to the side. So now we have two of the exact same pieces. So this piece over here is actually going to be the top of the fidget. And I'm going to go ahead and change the height to four on that just so it kind of brings it down to scale. And then if you wanna come over to the side over here and under your creations, you can go ahead and drag and drop those two pieces that we saved earlier because we're now gonna use these. Now I want you to take this piece right here and we're gonna drag that somewhere towards the middle of your project and go ahead and drop it there. But you're gonna notice that first of all, it's sitting way above the project here and it's showing that it's gonna cut out the bottom here. Okay, so in order to move this so it's not cutting through the bottom, first we have to come down here to the bottom here, change your snap grid to 0.5 millimeter and then make sure that this is selected only. And on my computer, I hit command and then the up and you can see how it just moved up one spot. I'll do it one more time. So you can see how it just lifted up one, which is basically 0.5 millimeters. And if we scroll underneath now, you can see it's no longer cutting through the bottom. Now, the next thing I wanna do is align all of this. So we're going to select just this portion here and we're gonna click the L button to align. And you can see all the little dots showing up here. So I'm gonna hit this one here to center and then this one here to center that. But you'll notice it's not in the center where I would like it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to select only this and I'm gonna use my up, down, left, right arrows and I'm gonna go up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 clicks up. And because I'm gonna to need to know that number because when I put this in here, I'm gonna to need to know that I went up 15 clicks from center. Now I'm going to take this and I'm gonna put this down in here as well. But you'll notice that it's not even sticking out of the surface anymore. It's actually on the bottom here, right? So we need to change that. So we're going to highlight just this section here. We're gonna hit the L for a line button, but you'll notice over here, you've got three little lines and this is basically bottom, middle, top. I want this to be aligned to the top and there it is. Now we need to align it the other direction. So we're gonna click align here and we're gonna click align here. But remember, it's now down too far. So I'm gonna select this and I'm going to hit one, two, oops, hang on. I'm gonna select this and I'm gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And now if I line these up, you can see 
that these are aligned. Now, we have to actually make a new border here because if I was to put this on top of this, this would be way too close to here. So we need to basically make this border just a little bit bigger. So basically you're going to simply click on that border piece again right here and you're gonna duplicate one more time. And then over here, quality all the way up, default to outer line, and then line width, we're just gonna do another one on that. And you can see what we just did. We now have two different lines here and we've made enough room for the fidget to now fit inside of this. Now I'm gonna grab this little white box here. I'm just gonna kind of move this down so you can kind of see the difference. But I'm also, what I'm gonna do for this next step is I'm going to lock this in place. Now there's a little lock button right here. If I lock this, that means that this will not be manipulated essentially. So now if I wanted to drag and copy all of these and if I wanted to say group this together, it would not group this piece. It would only group this one, this one, and this one together. But we have one more step before we get to that. So essentially we need to make this and this piece match up with this because you can tell the outline here, it's not, it's too high. It's So we basically need to adjust this. So we need to compensate for not only the size of this piece here uh, in the middle, because that's 11.27. We also have to account for the fact that we moved it up half a millimeter, right? So we basically need to increase the size of this piece. The easiest thing to do is just kind of raise it up a little bit. And then over here, you're going to change this and you're going to change it to 11.75, enter. And you can see now these two things are flush because this item was 11.27, but we moved it up 0.5. You're going to repeat that same process uh, you don't have to raise that one up. Just click over here and again, 11.75, enter. Now these two pieces are the same height. Now that they're the same height, just select all of these and you're gonna clip, click the group button, which is right here. And you'll watch as this piece is now cut out and now that's where the clicker is going to get inserted. Now you can select that piece that we had locked and you can go ahead and unlock it. And now you can raise this up as high as you want but really what we need to do is because we made this four, right? And this is at basically, let's just say that's at 11. So let's just put this at, let's say 15 even. And that'll give a nice little border for this to kind of sit inside. I'm gonna go ahead and select this right here and I'm gonna go ahead and group all of these together now. And now this is one solid piece and I'm gonna move this off to the side. Now for this final piece, all we have to do is select this and we're gonna go ahead and group this all together. That's gonna cut this piece out perfectly, all right? And now we're going to rotate this around so that that piece is on the bottom because I need the top, because I need to add the Superman logo back into this. I'm gonna go back to import and I'm going to drag the exact same Superman logo I had originally done. I'm gonna click artwork. And then originally I had put 50 as the size or the length. So I'm gonna want this just a little bit smaller. So I'm just gonna put 45 in here, hit the tab button, I'm gonna hit import and we're gonna see what happens. Now that you have the logo imported, we're gonna change the thickness of this, basically just kind of down to maybe two. So, and now we're gonna select these two and we're going to align. So I'm gonna hit the L button and we're going to align and align. And now I have the Superman logo on top of the clicker. Now I'm gonna select all three of these. And again, I'm gonna group them together. And now we are ready to export. Select both of your files here, click the export button, and you're gonna save as STL file. Once in Bamboo Studio, drag and drop your file right onto your build plate. And there you go, you have the body and you have the top. Now I'm gonna to wanna to color these. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to split these two into objects. I'm gonna add a second build plate and I'm gonna drag this over here. So I'm gonna separate these two. And using my paint can, that's what I've got. Now all that's left is to put them on the printer. We're changing the base back to red and let's go ahead and head to the printer. Each piece is gonna take about 25 to 30 minutes. Stay tuned for the final results. All right, I already did the results. It's, 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 here it is. This is the final thing. And there is the clicker device. What do you guys think? This video was very difficult to put together. Condensing this down to under 10 minutes was very stressful. Please ask questions if you if you want them in the comments. Um, you, I know you're gonna have them, but do your best with this tutorial and I appreciate you guys.